Canada has the most lakes of any country. By some estimates, it's home to as many as 2 million lakes. The majority are extremely small, however, and basically unknown. So what are the largest lakes in Canada, and more specifically, what's the largest lake that's entirely within each province and territory? I'm Chicago Geographer. If you like geography, make sure to subscribe to the channel for videos like this one every other week. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy. To start, let's get two important things out of the way. First, as I said in the intro, we'll be looking at lakes entirely contained within one province or territory. For example, this rules out the Great Lakes because they're shared with the US, of course. So as each province comes up, I'll point out any honorable mentions that got excluded in a similar way. Secondly, what do we do about man-made reservoirs? While I was making the US version of this video, I realized that most states have an artificial reservoir as their largest lake, and my choice to include them sparked a little bit of controversy. The Canadian list, however, is mostly natural lakes, but there are three reservoirs coming up which I'll be sure to point out and also share honorable mentions. Okay, with all that said, let's finally begin and go in order from smallest to largest. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the smallest province of Prince Edward Island kicks things off. Here we find the modest Pointe de Roche Pond at roughly 1.26 square kilometers, or about half a square mile. Now there are two slightly larger lakes here that aren't really lakes. Graham Rogers Lake in Charlottetown is really just a wide section of the North River, with this causeway as its arbitrary southern end. And then there's this very far east body of water, which of course is called South Lake, and it's classified as a barachois, a local term for a coastal lagoon. So Pointe de Roche Pond is the largest true lake in the province. There's basically no human presence on its shores except for this small dirt road that crosses it in the west. So this seems like a really nice and peaceful secluded lake. Kurt on Google Reviews likes the plants here and gave it 4 stars, so I'm sold. Nearby New Brunswick ramps things up with Grand Lake, measuring in at about 165 square kilometers. Historically, this lake was important for transporting coal and lumber from the surrounding area to the St. John River, which flows near the lake. Today, being located in the south-central portion of the province, it's relatively close to many of New Brunswick's major cities and has become a popular recreation spot. From camping to rental cabins to ice fishing, it draws thousands of locals year-round. And that reminds me, if anyone watching has been to any of these lakes before, leave a comment down below. Another interesting interesting fact about Grand Lake is that its waters are a major heat sink, which helps to regulate nearby temperatures and creates a microclimate supporting many tree species and a longer growing season. Now we're hopping to the opposite side of the country. Yukon's largest lake is Kluwani, which is about 408 square kilometers. It's located just northeast of Kluwani National Park, an incredible reserve of snow-capped mountains that contains the highest peak in all of Canada, Mount Logan. The Alaska Highway runs along the lake's western shore. The Kaskawalsh Glacier historically fed the lake with its meltwater, but decades of glacial retreat attributed to human-caused climate change diverted the flow of its waters away from the lake in 2016. While some water does still reach the lake, it's nowhere near like it used to be. Now, large dust clouds often stir up near the lake from the dry riverbed, and water quality and wildlife are beginning to be affected by the change. It remains to be seen what the long-term effects will be on this stunningly beautiful lake. Nova Scotia brings us back to Atlantic Canada again. The largest lake in the province is Bradore Lake, which at about 1,099 square kilometers takes up an impressive chunk of Cape Breton Island. However, this is technically a tidal estuary with a clear open connection to the ocean along this arm here. The largest body of water in the province not connected to the ocean is Lake Rossignol, a 151 square kilometer man-made reservoir. Bradour Lake has plenty of inflows from freshwater rivers, creating a unique environment of brackish water that supports great biodiversity. The lake and its surroundings are protected as one of Canada's 18 UNESCO Biosphere Reserves. Alexander Graham Bell had an estate on the lake Ben Vria, where he spent many of the last years of his life living and working on various technologies. Starting off the Prairie Provinces is Alberta and its 1,436 square kilometer Lake Clare, which is not in the prairie part of Alberta, but the boreal forests of the far north. We've got an honorable mention to make here with the nearby Lake Athabasca, which is much larger than Lake Clare at 7,850 square kilometers, but of course is disqualified since it's shared with Saskatchewan. The two lakes are closely related though, both being part of the Peace Athabasca Delta, which is North America's largest inland freshwater river delta. Lake Clare's water drain into the Peace River, and the lake is protected as part of Wood Buffalo National Park, the second largest national park in the world. Its shallow water, biodiversity, and untouched wilderness make it a desirable fishing spot, but you can only access the lake by floatplane or boat. 
One province west is British Columbia and its largest lake, which is also part of the Peace River system, Williston Lake. This is a vast 1,761 square kilometer man-made reservoir along the Peace River where it flows through the Rocky Mountain Trench. The largest natural lake entirely in BC is Babin Lake at 479 square kilometers, by the way. Anyway, back to Williston Lake, it was formed in 1968 by the construction of the WAC Bennett Dam, which displaced several dozen members of the Sei Kedene First Nation. It it also significantly decreased the water flow to the Peace Athabasca Delta back near Alberta's largest lake, creating some ecological issues there. On a more positive note, the reservoir's waters provide plentiful hydroelectricity to the tune of about one-third of all of BC's power demands at peak operation. Saskatchewan marks the halfway point of this list. Don't get its largest lake mixed up with BC's, though. Wollaston Lake, measuring about 2,286 square kilometers, is one of the many huge lakes in northern Canada's boreal forest. For honorable mentions, we already touched upon Athabasca being excluded, but Sask has part of another lake larger than Wollaston in Reindeer Lake, of which about 8% of its 6,650 square kilometers are shared with Manitoba. Perhaps the most interesting thing about Wollaston Lake is that it's the largest largest bifurcating lake in the world. In other words, its waters naturally drain in two different directions. A small portion of its waters end up in the Arctic Ocean, while the majority eventually makes its way to Hudson Bay. This fascinating and remote lake has only one settlement on its shores, the tiny town of Wollaston Lake, which had just 96 residents in the last census. I was a little bit surprised that Quebec's largest lake is also a reservoir, but in fact, all three of its biggest lakes are man-made. Caniapisco takes first place at 4,318 square kilometers, while the province's largest natural lake is Mistassini at 2,335. In this reservoir's place used to be a much smaller natural lake, but construction of various dams and dikes in the 1970s vastly expanded it. It's part of the James Bay Project, a multi-billion dollar hydroelectricity endeavor in rural North Quebec that rivals the hydroelectric power production of a small industrialized nation. The two other reservoirs rounding out the top three largest water bodies in Quebec are also reservoirs in this project, Robert Barassa and La Grande 3. Like many of the previous lakes on this list, there's barely any human presence along Caniapisco's shores, with small gravel roads offering the only overland access. Ontario starts off the top five of this list, and as I mentioned right at the start of this video, none of the Great Lakes are eligible because they're of course shared with the US. That leaves Lake Nipigon to claim the title of largest lake entirely in Ontario, measured at roughly 4,848 square kilometers. It's part of the Great Lakes drainage basin, specifically that of Lake Superior, which is just south of it. Despite only being 75 miles from the city of Thunder Bay, this lake too remains largely untouched by human activity, with just a handful of small First Nations communities dotting its shore. The Canadian National Railway's main line passes just north of the lake as well. Beyond all this, it's overseen by several different provincial parks which are working to protect its natural environment. Up in the territory of Nunavut is Necheling Lake. This one is 5,542 square kilometers and ranks among the top 30 biggest lakes in the world, which gives you an idea of just how huge Canada's lakes are, since we have three more to go after this. Necheling is way out on Baffin Island, which in fact makes it the largest lake on an island anywhere in the world. Unsurprisingly, the lake is frozen for most of the year, and this, combined with its exceptionally isolated location, means that barely any animal species make it out here, let alone humans. Only three species of fish have ever been discovered in its waters, while caribou and occasionally ringed seals visit to feed. The lake's waters end up in the Fox Basin by way of the impressive Kokjuak River, which I definitely did not pronounce correctly, but this river carves a very wide and very direct pathway from lake to sea. We've made it to the top three now. Newfoundland and Labrador brings us another reservoir, Smallwood, which is about 6,527 square kilometers and situated in western Labrador. Although it's relatively close to the reservoirs of Quebec's James Bay project, this one was built separately from 1966 to 1974. Interestingly, 88 dikes in total form this lake, which rose from a rugged area of smaller lakes and bogs. This is, of course, a man-made body of water, so to make some honorable mentions for natural lakes in the province, there's Lake Melville, which is actually an estuary, but often treated as a lake. And for a true lake, Ashuanapi is the largest at only 517 square kilometers right next to Quebec. 
Second place, Manitoba takes an unbelievable leap up in size with Lake Winnipeg, the 12th largest lake in the world at 24,387 square kilometers. That's a tiny bit bigger than the entire U.S. state of New Hampshire. Despite its size, the lake is relatively shallow, averaging just 12 feet deep. Lake Winnipeg is a remnant of Lake Agassiz, a huge glacial meltwater lake that dried up around 8,000 years ago. The southern end of the lake is fairly close to the city of Winnipeg, as seems fitting, and down here is where most human development is on the lake. Thousands of locals flock to its small beach towns, such as Gimli, every summer. It's also popular for its fish, of which it has more variety than any other Canadian lake west of the Great Lakes. As such, commercial fishing is an important economic sector in the area, prized for its walleye and whitefish. The more rugged eastern shore of the lake is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site created in 2018. And at last, we arrive at the largest lake entirely in Canada, Great Bear Lake of the Northwest Territories. Measuring an astounding 31,153 square kilometers, it's the eighth largest lake in the world. It's also the absolute largest lake in the world that's partially within the Arctic Circle. As you might expect from such a northern lake, human exploration and settlement is extremely limited, with the small indigenous community of Delaunay situated at its southwestern edge. The lake is highly valued in their culture, and preserving its environment environmental stability is among their top goals. There are five main arms of the lake, Smith, Dees, McTavish, McVicker, and Keith, each one of which has their own unique fish populations. Early Canadian explorers in the 1820s played ice hockey on Great Bear's frozen surface, which is among the earliest recorded games played in Canada. More recently, the shores of the lake saw heavy metal mining during the 20th century at communities like Port Radium, but they've since been shut down and largely demolished. Great Bear Lake is massive, isolated, and and one of Canada's most inspiring natural environments, and it must continue to be protected. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel for more. I make videos just like this one every other week along with GeoGuessr challenges. Until next time, have a great rest of your day, and thanks again for watching.